Hey guys, so I finally finished my e-bike build and the last piece of the puzzle was the lighting system. Now in previous videos, I showed you guys how to properly install your rear hub motor using the spacers and washers that are included or may not be included with your rear hub motor kit. And in a separate video, I showed you guys how to go about designing and building your own torque arm for your specific e-bike. Now in this video, like I said, we're gonna be covering the lighting system on my e-bike. It's custom, it's something that I built. I wired up and came up with my own wiring diagram. So we're gonna go over that. And this lighting system includes a front headlight, tail light in the back, brake lights, as well as turn signals, both front and rear. So let's get started. First, we're gonna take a look at the front of the bike and front and center, we have a single LED headlight that's controlled with a switch on the handlebars. And on either side of the headlight, we have amber LED turn signals from a motorcycle that will indicate your intention, obviously if you're turning left or right. And these are controlled with a two position switch next to the headlight switch on the handlebars. And this next clip just shows the turn signals functioning without the headlight on. So you can get a better look at the style of turn signal and you can see that obviously they work without the headlight being activated as well. In addition to the standard headlight function, this headlight also has an emergency strobe pattern which can be activated simply by pressing the brake light button a few times very quickly. Looking at the back of the bike, we're going to first take a look at the brake light functioning without the headlight on. You'll notice that the headlight does come on and it's just an additional warning to oncoming drivers. Then of course we can switch the headlight on and we can take a look at the turn signals. They obviously work with the headlights and tail lights on. So it's the right turn signal. And now the left turn signal obviously works as well. Again, this is with the steady on tail lights. Now we can turn those off. And again, look at the tail lights functioning without the headlights on. So of course the right turn signal and left turn signal both work correctly. And one thing to note here that I didn't capture was I didn't capture the brake light coming on with the tail lights on. And so these are dual brightness tail lights, so that would work of course. Looking down at the handlebars, you can see that the controls have been conveniently placed near your thumbs. So on the left hand side of the top, we have a rocker switch to turn the headlights on and off. Underneath of it, you have a two position rocker switch to turn the left hand turn signal on and then the right hand turn signal on. And over on the right hand side, you'll see the red illuminated momentary push button and this is for the brake light. So of course you'd have to hold it down the same way you have to press a brake pedal down in a car in order for the light to stay on. Powering this entire lighting system is a Milwaukee M12 tool battery which just clips into place here in a 3D printed holder. Once it's clipped into place, the connections are made and all the lights are ready to go. I'll make all of these 3D printed parts available for you guys to download and of course print on your own. I'll put them on Thingiverse, there'll be a link in the description. So now we're gonna take a look at the wiring diagram which is pretty simple and straightforward. So on the right hand side of the diagram we have the three front lights that are all grouped together. So the left hand turn signal, the headlight and the right hand turn signal all represented by those LED diode symbols there on the right hand side. These are all uh, 12 volt positive switched so the ground wire is common to each one and it goes back to the 12 volt ground uh, represented by the batteries in the that's the black wire there so pretty simple and straightforward now the tail light module on the left hand side of the diagram has five wires and this too is pretty straightforward each of those wire colors is accurate to the real life version of the tail light module which i will uh, link to in the description so on the top there you have the the orange wire which handles the left hand turn signal, the yellow wire which handles the tail light, red wire which handles the brake light, blue wire which handles the right hand turn signal, and each of these are positive switched. So you have to provide 12 volt power, 12 volt positive power to each of those to activate their respective functions. Now in the very top, you'll see a 12 volt automotive flasher. This is the key to getting the flashing function working for both the front and rear turn signals. So this is just a three prong automotive flasher. I happen to have one lying around here, but you can go to your local auto parts store and get one. The key though is not to get a thermal flasher, you have to get a digital flasher. 
Thermal flashers will not flash or likely won't flash anyways with LEDs attached to the load uh, because they don't draw enough current to activate the bimetallic strip that controls the flashing. So in this particular case, the three prong flasher has three connections, one to ground, one to the 12 volt supply, positive of course, and then there's a third pin which is the load. This is the purple wire that you see and that goes to the single pull double throw switch which uh, directs power essentially to either the left hand turn signal or the right hand turn signal. And so as soon as one of those is connected and then you have the flashing function working based on that automotive flasher. Next up is the headlight switch which is a single pull single throw rocker switch like I mentioned earlier and you'll notice that it provides 12 volt positive power to the headlight as well as the yellow wire there which traces back to the tail light on the brake light module and the tail light may, you may also know as a running light and of course that just increases visibility at night. Below that is the brake switch which is another single pull single throw switch and in this case it is a momentary push button like I showed you earlier and again this is taking 12 volt positive power and running it back through the red wire there to the brake light. Now the only thing I don't have on this diagram is the illuminated portion of that brake switch and as I showed you earlier in the video I did use an illuminated switch so if you do also use an illuminated switch for your brake light you will just need to add 12 volt positive and of course a ground source for that illuminated portion which is usually just a little LED. So putting all this together there's a few main 3D printed parts which I've made available to you on my Thingiverse page. You can find the link in the description down below but basically for the tail light the tail light module gets bolted to one half of the tail light housing. The other half of the tail light housing the clamp mounting clamp gets bolted to that which will clamp onto the vertical seat post. Now when those two halves of the tail light housing get bolted together there's some space inside and that space inside is meant for you to put the automotive flasher in there as well as all of your wire connections so you can neatly hide a lot of your soldering if you choose to solder them. In my case I decided to use a few of those Wago splices and I've hid all of those inside that housing conveniently to keep them away from water, their elements, uh, as well as keeping out of sight so everything looks nice and cleanly wired. At the front of the bike there are three printed pieces which mount the headlight and turn signals to the handlebar stem. Now these three pieces together allow you to independently adjust the angle of the headlight compared to the angle of the turn signals so that you're not blinding oncoming drivers with your headlight but they can still very clearly see your turn signals. The clamp is meant for a roughly 35 millimeter diameter handlebar stem so if your bike has a larger one you may have to redesign this clamp and if it has a smaller one you may also be able to get away with just using a spacer in between the clamp pieces. Last but not least is the battery mount which is actually two pieces so the primary piece is where the battery snaps into and you can see in the picture there's the zip ties that go through this piece that mount it to the bicycle frame. On the one end of the piece which actually makes the electrical connections to the battery there are L-shaped blade terminals which bolt into this piece with some very small M2.5 socket head cap screws with nuts on the other side and then you can use some ring terminals with your wires to connect to those blade terminals, hide it all inside the second piece which is the cap that bolts onto the end of that and you can add a strain relief inside that cap just simply by tying your wires in a knot. I'll leave you guys with a few more angles of this lighting setup but don't forget to check the description down below where you'll find a link to my Thingverse page where you'll find all of the 3D printable parts so that you can build something similar for yourself. And on the Thingverse page, you'll also find a more detailed description of this build along with links to each of the parts that I used. You'll also find those links in the description itself, but just things like the tail lights, the headlight, the turn signals, switches, and even some of the hardware. So that's it for the lighting system, guys. This is probably the last build related video for the e-bike series. Now in a future video, I do plan on doing something like a performance review, just some simple aspects of the bike, like the top speed, how well the bike deals with hills and how well the bike is suited for a commute in an urban environment, considering that I do live in a city. 
It's a full suspension mountain bike with street tires on it. So we'll see how that handles things like potholes and that sort of thing that you'll commonly find around a city. And that might help you decide whether or not if this sort of bike build is the right build for you. Please check out my other e-bike related videos as well as any other videos you guys happen to find helpful, interesting, or useful on my channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.